Uh, this is Wilson Morales. This is Wilson Morales talking to director Charles Officer and actor Saul Williams on the latest film Atticus Escape, which is premiering at Toronto. Uh, you're no stranger to doing drama films. Reports have it this is a return for you. What led you to take on this project? Yes. Um, what led me into uh, uh, the conception of uh, Achilles' escape is um, came from a question. The question of uh, black boys, um, you know, how they escape and deal with generational trauma. And and this is a result of it. I mean, this, this film is... Uh, it's got layers and it's also, you know, dealing with the idea of, you know, the political sort of origins and history of where violence comes from, you know, within a small island like Jamaica and how that actually trickles across that, those borders into Toronto and New York. And, and so, yeah, just looking at the origins of that, of that, that, that question and, and Achilles escape uh, became that. Yeah. <laughs> Saul. It's been a minute since you had a big lead role and carrying it through. This is the first in a, in a minute for you. What the, how did you get involved with the project? Well, Charles and I have, have been friends and, and engaged with each other since uh, my first film, Slam. We met in Toronto at, uh, at TIFF in 98 when Slam was there. Um, you know, and, um, and like I said, every time that I was in Toronto or he was in Paris, wherever I was, we made it our business to spend some time together. And, uh, and Charles always made it clear that, you know, when the opportunity came, he wanted us to work together. And so this was that opportunity. And so um, I don't know at what point it was in Charles's process, but uh, pretty early on, he reached out to me and said, hey, looks like uh, this film is going to, you know, get greenlit. And this is the project I want us to do. Now, for Charles, you know, the references to Homer's Iliad, from what I've read, and within the story here, you're weaving the past and the present. What's the daunting challenge, I guess, uh, of mixing both and make it work so that the audiences can get where you're going with this movie? Yeah, I think it is a very tricky thing when you're dealing with, um, you know, dual timelines and, and, um, and you know, with a lot of help with a uh, co-writer motion, uh, when you wrote motion Brathwaite, she, she was really helpful in the script stage when I was struggling with actually the, how much we want to show from the past and how we were weaving that through the present line. And, um, you know, and, and, and there are thematics around this, like, you know, the Greek mythology, the story of Achilles and, and we have Aquila and his mother's name is Thetis and the idea of this, this warrior and, 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 you know, caught in this political sort of battle and, and so, but, but, but the origins of that was important. So what really dialed in for me was the idea of an origin story and a reckoning story happening at the same time. And, um, and then with the dual casting uh, to help to emphasize, you know, visually that we were talking about a boy and this lineage and this generational thing and, and, um, and how we kind of re, relive these moments, but visually it's like the same boy, you know? So, so all these sort of ideas came out of, you know, spending time and thinking and, and, um, and really trying to articulate some moments from the past that would help to inform who the man is in the future. So it was a lot of dissecting and a lot of time and a lot of thinking about it. So, um, but then having, you know, um, like Sol said, it's like I started casting him in this film before I mentioned it to him, like years before I mentioned it to him. So watching him and also young Tamela, who's, who, who plays Shepard and young Akila, I'd work with him and been watching him and how he behaves. And, and so it was an amalgamation of, 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 of um, actually something very organic, you know. Mm -hmm. And for Saul, as, as I mentioned before, you know, uh, you and Charles have known each other for a long time. You would have done it uh, the, no matter, what, I guess, what the script is. But when you got the script and you see what this character has to go through and there's a lot of emotions with him, you know, and for, I guess the audience, they have to see whether or not he's trying to redeem himself from what he's done in the past. You know, how else did you see the character and how did you and Charles work to uh, around that character? Well, you know, on one hand, you know, I, I, I can't sincerely say that I would have done it no matter what, you okay. know. You know, regardless of my, you know, affinity for Charles or what have you, um, I, I think I've always reserved the right to be selective. 
Um, but the beautiful thing about, about, you know, this script that Charles and, and Motion wrote is that, you know, all of the, the keys and clues that an actor would need into the interior life or the, or the back world of the character were, were in the story. You know, oftentimes an actor has to question how the character may, may have been raised, what their childhood was like. All of this stuff is in the script, you know? So for me, understanding, um, and, and, it's, and it actually, I compare it with a similar experience I had with a, a film uh, that I did with Alain Gomis called Tay, which we shot in Senegal, I guess in 2012 or something like that. And he too had written this thing, a story that was kind of told through the eyes. And when I read Charles' script, it was also clear that there was an interior world and something that had to be told through the eyes of the character. You know, something that just had to be felt, that it wasn't always in the text, you know? It wasn't because of what was said that you were gonna understand everything about what was happening in that character, but you had to, you had to resonate that from within and, and the audience would have to read that through the eyes. And, um, and that, that was clear in the script. And so from there, um, I think, you know, the time spent with Charles on set was was him encouraging me simply to like to trust to trust that that was enough that we didn't have to go overboard to um you know to give any sense of anything that it was all there you know and and so i trusted him he trusted me and and so it it, it we kind of just met somewhere in the middle there and and um, hopefully he's pleased <laughs> but um but he, pleased. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but I would say the set felt like a safe space, you know, in the process. And um and 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 Charles Charles's work, I mean, his heart is in his work, and it's always been in his work. It's not a new endeavor for him to put his heart so deeply in his work. Um, and so that was something that that I found uh, very comfortable in connecting to, even though you know the sort of violence and and and. And, and trauma that my character had been exposed to may not be the same way that I've been exposed to my personal life. It was something that I could truly empathize with. You know, the story is universal because you can take this and place it in any city, you know, between when you think about youth and violence and, you know, as you mentioned within the film, the cycle. Um, as you put together the script, at, did at any given point, did you update it reflecting what's happening currently as you were writing the script hmm. yeah well what i did was which which was interesting was i eliminated a whole you know i i wrote the i wrote the first draft of this film in 2010 and and i remember what was very very influential at the time when i was writing it which i started to incorporate into the script was in jamaica when they went hunting for Duddas coke it was a it was a massacre and so many people died and uh, looking for this man and the special forces and, and U.S. intelligence and, and what that really bestowed upon a, a, on a community was, was, was crazy. So there was a point where I actually was, was really writing in what was happening in the moment. But, but I was also predicting the idea of where this conversation around legalization was happening in Canada. And I was also predicting that at that time, it's very fascinating when I was writing a script then that, that he was dealing with this certain time that actually hadn't happened yet. So, so it was very interesting that, that the time that it's taken to write, the, to, to get this film made, that it actually legalization actually did happen. Uh -huh. And so that was a part where I actually revamped into the scenario of where he was working. And, and now it's like, you know, it became a conversation of, of not just being a clandestine oper operation, but now he's actually legitimized, but now within this political legitimization of something that, you know, came from this, this island <laughs> and, and, you know, under this colonial law was deemed this, you know, criminal activity. Um, and, and then that's when he chooses like, this is, this is nonsense, I'm out. You know, so that was really where, where, where kind of the world caught up to someone imagining um, what was going to happen around that issue. So, so that was the main thing that actually, uh, you know, kind of incorporated, found itself into present day, 2020, you know, it, we, we've been a year like in Lila and it's been, and it's been, it's been a, 
it's been a mess, you know? Um, so, 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 so Akila, and, and that was also a very interesting question from some of the financiers are like, well, why would he choose to get out now when it's legal? Um, but in the same conversation, they'd say in our age, now that it is legal, they said there were these people that were out front of this thing. They were doing, they were selling it illegally. I'm like, no, we're actually legal now. So even the language and where people are catching up to what's actually in place now, people still think it's illegal, <laughs> you know? And, and, and again, the criminalization of, 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 of black men just on sight, um, you know, um, that was something that was, that came in a very subtle way of just even the first scene with our little boy and how this, this detective is talking to a minor, you know, they clearly states he's talking to a minor but at the same time, he's actually okay to show him the most gruesome images. And so, so those sort of things were coming more prevalent to me as well as seeing, hearing our, the mayor of Toronto and how he's been talking about black boys here. So um, yeah, so there are a few little things in there that kind of caught up. <laughs> so I see you're on some set uh, background, you know, obviously you contributed to the score of this. Can you talk about the music in place, you know, um, I used to do a, a radio show a long time ago called Soundtrack. So when I heard that you were contributing to the score, now nah, I'm interested, like, what did you add to it? You know, and uh, how different is it from your previous works, music-wise? Yeah, well, you know, Charles, you know, s spoke to me from the beginning saying that he wanted me involved musically, although I kind of pushed it in the back of my mind to, to stay focused on the acting and, and the portrayal of the character initially. But once the film was shot, uh, of course, Charles reiterated it, and and for me, it was a time to then s sincerely think about what to do. I had already uh, broached the idea with Charles that I was in the midst of a collaboration with 3D for Massive Attack, um, and that I felt as if the music I was working on there was, uh, which which was just a collaboration on between two friends. Like it had no home, it had no place. It was just something we were doing, you know. And um, and the the kind of synergy in place was the fact that a lot of the sounds that we were playing with felt cinematic in scope and felt like it could lend itself to a sort of depth, you know, that that it could in fact deepen some of the the work that that some of the images from the film, you know, that it could bring the necessary depth for that, you know, we, we're calling it a crime noir, for example, you know, like, but that what what does that feel like what does that sound like sonically you know um and i you know presented charles with some ideas and he jumped on them i presented 3d for massive attacks you know the idea um and introduced him and charles and it all just came together so um kind of magically kind mm -hmm. of magically yet at the same time it's um you know, what I think the goal, I, once I first started trying placing uh, sounds to images, uh, what I immediately discovered was that any sort of middle ground that was felt before, in, you know, th through the film was suddenly like you had a sense of, and that's what music does to a film, of course, of, of is something about to happen or wait, what's, what, there's something beneath this, you know, the sense of that, of that underworld, you know? And so then that became the goal is to try to carry that sensibility, you know, into that, that sonic sphere. And so, yeah. Yeah. Great. Right. We were blessed. You know, um, at the, so now that we've seen you on this, are you back to, is the acting bag acting bug back again for you? Like, are you going to do more roles or, you know, what, what the, was your fancy? Is it music? Is it acting? Like poetry? Like, Well, I actually just uh, wrapped my first feature, uh, my directorial debut. Um, and so right before the pandemic, um, from November through mid-March, uh, my wife and I were in Rwanda uh, shooting a film called Neptune Frost, which we're now in post-production for. Um, I'm not in that film. Um, but it is, uh, you know, a furtherance. It's a musical. And so I wrote the music, the script, and all of this, and, and it's, uh, it's very exciting. And so that's where I am right now. In terms of acting, um, you know, acting is my first love. Uh, I am always open and interested 
to possibilities in acting. Um, it's, it's something I've always wanted to do and unfortunately have also sometimes avoided because of the sort of stereotypical offers that have come along the way. Um, but as, you know, minds get open and time progresses, um, I can imagine that I would be doing a lot more. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, you know, before you I see, you gonna say anything, Charles? You must. you must, I mean, I mean, I love this what I love about Saul is that he is, he is, he's a true artist. He has, and, and, I, and people use that term in the, in, you know, loosely even, but, but he's the truth art, artist. And, and, and so when that comes out in, in whatever he does as an actor and his music and his writing, it's, um, you know, I, I want to see him in playing all kinds of roles. I would love that, but I do love his, the way how selective he is about, about what he does. And, and I never, you know, was in the state of mind when I approached him with this project that he would, and assume that he would just say yes. You know, that's, that's, you know, I say, you come to Saul Williams, you come to him correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, before I let you go, uh, Charles, you know, obviously, you know, this year is different with regards to Toronto and selections. It's way less than what we've had in the past. You know, how do you feel that, you know, your film was selected to be seen at a festival where you may get a bigger audience, you know, who may see it online for those who can't be in Toronto and just being selected, you know, it's like, uh, and, you know, obviously, you know, everybody's doing things to show a range of diversity and to know that one of your films is, is a selected. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a massive honor. I know it's an, um, it's a, it's a real challenging time. It's, it's, it's hard to feel completely celebratory because, you know, I know a lot of excellent films are made this year and, but, um, but, you know, I think Denzel Washington had said it in, in some interview very early on in his career. He's like, I'm sitting in the chair right now, you know, and that's, and that's something to, 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 to respect and be grateful for, um, you know, I'm the only black uh, filmmaker with a feature film in Canada in this festival. And it's a Toronto International, International Film Festival. It's very sparse that we have black filmmakers making features in this country in Canada. We have, there's a few more in America, but um, so knowing that those numbers were very slim and you know, I don't, I don't take, I'm not passive or, or, or take this as something um, that is just a, a given opportunity at all. So I'm happy that the, the talent has a platform. We have a place to, to launch the film. Um, and hopefully, yeah, you know, more eyes would, will, will, will get on it. Um, and so, so I just hope that there's a, uh, that there's a bit of, um, you know, you never know with, the, with films, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's still, it's when being selected is one thing and then how people respond to it is another thing. And, and so um, at the core of it, I understand the, the the family we assembled and 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 it's about them for me and um and this story so so that's what i'm that's what i'm grateful for hey you know i always tell people you know based on what i do you guys working gives me work you know and there's a synergy out there as long as you continue to do what you do whether it's front or behind the screens i have any reason i have a reason to write so you know, I appreciate you guys uh, putting the story together so that people can see about it, can learn from it, you know, keep doing your thing separately. I'm always here to support. I'm going to let you guys go, you know, enjoy whatever you're doing. Stay safe. And uh, at some point, maybe next year or your next project, we'll meet face to face. That'd be awesome. Thank you for taking Thank you. Time. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye. Take care.